They counter the probing attacks so well that Confederate General Early abandons his attempts at a frontal assault. An alternate means is found when cavalry troops locate a crossing south of the junction. They will instead flank the enemy. Meanwhile, Confederate sharpshooters are put in Best's barn to pick away at the Federals as more Confederate artillery is brought to bear. The Union gunners return fire and set the barn ablaze. At Worthington Ford, the Confederates push through a few Union defenders, splash across the river, dismount, and form for attack. To meet the threat, the Union brigades shift to the left on the Thomas Farm, and the line of skirmishers are advanced to the wooden fence that separates the farms. They wait there behind the fence as the unsuspecting Confederates come quick-stepping through the corner. The skirmishers pour a withering fire into the rebel troops, shattering the first Confederate attack. To prevent an attack on their right flank, Union troops torch the wooden bridge. A lull then fell over the battlefield. Time to treat the wounded at Gambrel's Mill and wait for another Confederate thrust. This time, the cavalrymen attack on a broader front and feel for the Federal left flank. The lines close to point-blank range. Fighting becomes hand-to-hand. -hand. The Federals are pushed back behind the Thomas House. But reserves are rushed in to counterattack, and they overwhelm the Confederates, driving them back a second time. With little time to rest, the Confederate main thrust came. A full division out of Frederick crossing the river and forming up. The Confederate attack would be in three echelons. The first was to turn the Federal left flank, the second to smash through the middle of the line, and following it would be the third, sweeping up along the river to the bridges. The battle was brief and fierce, and hundreds fell in the assault. Thomas House was lost, as the Federal lines weakened and fell back. Across the river at the junction, the Confederates drove through to the blockhouse, forcing the defenders into a desperate escape across the railroad bridge under fire. Outgunned and outnumbered, the Federal forces fall back, as the Confederates keep coming like a sheet of flame. And then it was over, as the Federals retreat past Gamble's Mill, north along the river to Baltimore. They held as long as they could, and it was long enough. As darkness falls, Jubal Early's army encamps on the field, badly mauled and too late to press on. The Confederates finally reached Fort Stevens two days later, but by then Union troops had just arrived from Petersburg to stop them. Early and his army were forced to withdraw, ending the South.